Greetings, I'm Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for tuning in. I'm the author of the book Candida Crusher and also the formulator of the Candida range of dietary supplements. In this video, I'm going to share with you what I consider to be the most effective way to do a Candida cleanse. Very effective. In fact, this cleanse will also work for people with SIBO and a multitude of other conditions. I've developed this protocol over 30 years, working with many thousands of patients. I'm going over my three-phase candida diet. I'm also going to go over the supplements, why you only need two or three supplements to really nail candida, the six criteria to look for when selecting an antifungal, which natural herbs work the best to cleanse candida, and lots of tips and tricks and hints I've discovered in my three plus decades of working with candida patients right here in my clinic in New Zealand. This will be a video you'll want to take notes on and maybe watch twice or maybe three times because there'll be quite a lot of information here I'm going to share with you and a lot of this information you've likely never heard before. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there are three main elements to a candida cleanse. Three main elements. If you do these three, three things right, your yeast, the beast I call yeast, will likely be gone. It doesn't matter if you've been suffering for candida for two months or two years or even 20 years. I don't really care. Yeast doesn't stand much of a chance when you hit it. And with the method I'm about to teach you, you'll certainly hit it all right. So let's start with the first one, and that's the proper diet. What should you be eating? Whenever I get a new patient with a yeast infection, the first thing I do is I put them what I call on the 14-day big cleanup. I like to label it as my warm turkey approach. Cold turkey means you have to take something away from the person overnight. It's in instantaneous. Warm turkey may, means you make things more gradual and slowly over a period of time, which reduces the risk of aggravations. In my clinical experience, it's not a great idea to plunge a patient from a standard overnight, you know, overnight from a standard diet head on into a candida diet. It usually fails. So over this 14 day big cleanup period, I really want you to pay attention to everything you're eating and drinking. I want you to stop all alcohol. Cutting out alcohol is critical if you really want to get rid of a yeast infection. But not only candida, we're talking SIBO as well. We're talking irritable bowel syndrome, we're talking many gut conditions. If you continue to drink, it's not gonna work. I've got many videos about this you can watch on my channel. I also want you to cut your caffeine intake down to one cup per day, preferably. If you've been a very high caffeine user, cut down to two per day, because by the end of the 14 day cleanup, we want you off that stuff. A cup of coffee or tea in the morning is okay, as long as you don't put sugar in it. If you really want to have a look at what takeaway or junk food is in your diet, take a good hard long look. Okay, look at the processed foods, look at these kind of foods. These are the foods you need to reduce and get out of your diet, okay? Particularly in this 14 day big cleanup. <clears throat> Go through your refrigerator and pantry. Get rid of any old bottles or sauces or jams you've got. Just put them in the garbage. It could be shrimp sauce, chili sauce, tomato sauce, whatever sauce it is, it's usually got sugar and preservatives and crap in it. So it needs to go, whatever it is. If I went to your refrigerator now, I'd likely find stuff there which I would probably happily put in the trash. These foods are what I call mold traps. They're not good to have around when you're trying to get rid of candida. Okay? So during this 14 day period, I want you to slowly make the switch from eating not so great foods to eating better foods. And eventually I want you to eat the best foods like I do. After all, you value your health. I'm sure you do. You know what better means? It means fresh, whole, unprocessed foods. So that's the big cleanup. On day 15, you're going to transition to what I call the MEVI diet. M for meat, E for eggs, V for vegetables, and Y for yogurt, the MEVI diet. This is step one of the three phase Candida Crusher diet. MEVI stands for meat, eggs, vegetables, and yogurt. I didn't invent this diet. It's been around a long, long time. It was developed in the late 70s, early 80s. I first learned about this diet back in the 80s when I read The Yeast Syndrome by Dr. John Trowbridge. This is a low sugar, high protein diet. 
This diet came around long before paleo diets or high protein diets were ever even thought of. This diet was around before Google was even born. Remember, Candida loves sugar. So we can starve it by taking out sugar out of your diet. If it can't eat, then the yeast can't grow. Simple. And that's what makes it easy for your immune system. Also, we're not going to produce all those metabolites that Candida can make. So we've got to take it out. We've got to take sugar out. If you're a vegan or you prefer not to eat meat, there's plenty of other options for you. Don't worry. You can eat legumes like lentils. Red lentils, for example, are very high in antioxidants and they only take minutes to cook. You need to eat nuts, seeds, beans, tempeh, all sorts of stuff. If you're a meat eater and want to go on the legume route, be aware it can take your gut bacteria some time to get used to these kind of foods. And you may experience flatulence in the meantime, a bit of bloating. I recommend good quality lean meats. My favorite lean meat is fresh fish, fresh ocean fish, free range or pastured chicken and free range eggs. If you like to buy chicken and you're in the United States, make sure you buy organic because otherwise the chickens are fed antibiotics and you don't want that in your meat and you don't want those antibiotics messing up your gut. Now I'm going to go in depth into exactly which foods you should eat and avoid in this video. So pay attention. In a separate video, all about which you can watch by clicking in the description. Okay, so click on the link if you want to watch that. Now, patients often ask me, how long do I need to stay on this Mevi diet for? Is it a month? Is it six months? There's no fixed timeline. Usually I like to keep patients on the Mevi diet between one to three months, sometimes four months. It depends on how you feel as you go through the cleanse and how your symptoms improve. Once you're done with the Mevi diet, it's time to move to phase two, the low allergy diet, or I call the hypoallergenic diet. The purpose of the low allergy diet is to reduce the inflammation and heal the gut wall. The way we do this is we take out all the foods that can potentially trigger allergic reactions in your gut. This is a very smart move because it lets your immune system back off. It doesn't have to shadow box the antibodies anymore. So it backs off from the potential allergens in your eating. And if you really want to nail this yeast infection, you've got to make it easy for the immune system to function. Now you want to take these foods out of your diet, even if you don't think you have an allergy to them, because chances are they're causing an inflammatory response somewhere else. We want to turn that knob down to zero as we work getting your bowel in tip-top shape. You take out the dairy products, in particular cow's milk. Research I did with a doctor a long time ago indicated that the top allergenic food is cow's milk. You also take out citrus, especially oranges, pineapples, bananas, shellfish, peanuts, and peanut butter. Anything with wheat and gluten in it. And chocolate as well. I've done a tremendous amount of allergy work over the years, testing over 350 young children in a particular trial with a doctor, and I found nearly 70% had a problem with cow's milk. Bananas came back around 14% potential for allergies, and shellfish came back also with a high potential, almost 20%. Remember, this is only a temporary measure. I'm not saying you can never eat oranges or chocolate or wheat ever again. But you do need to take them out for at least three to four weeks, minimum. Particularly chocolate. I don't care if it's dark chocolate or raw cacao. couldn't care less. It's got to go. Don't argue with me, please. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I can tell you right now, chocolate aggravates candida. Once you go through this phase, the low allergy phase, you're going to notice there are a lot of the foods that you thought you couldn't eat don't trigger an immune response anymore. This is because we're strengthening the small intestine wall. We're shutting the door to leaky gut. We got rid of any leaky gut you might have. That's why this is a crucial step, a step that many practitioners forego. Nearly all patients I've seen with a yeast infection or SIBO have leaky gut to some degree, ranging from mild to extreme. Once you've been on this low allergy diet for at least four to six weeks, we start with the third phase, the food reintroduction phase. Many practitioners skip this intermediate phase and go straight from a diet to the food reintroduction, which in my opinion is a mistake. So let's talk now about the food reintroduction phase. 
I've got several videos on my YouTube channel on how to reintroduce foods back into your diet. What you basically want to do is get a piece of paper and write down all the foods you really love but can't eat because of candida. This could be wine, it could be rice, it could be potatoes, it could also be bread products, foods that contain gluten, cheeses, grains, pizzas, whatever you like, just write it down. Start with these kind of foods first. Don't jump straight to the cookies and ice cream and pastries. You want to experiment with those kind of foods last. The foods you love the most are the foods you need to introduce the last. We want you to slowly reintroduce these foods back into your diet to see how they react. And what you're going to notice is that you can now tolerate a lot of the foods that likely you could not tolerate previously. All right? So that's the diet portion of the Candida Cleanse. The next portion I'd like to discuss is lifestyle. This is the hardest part of the Candida Cleanse by far. It's the part that nearly all people ignore. It's the part that most practitioners entirely forego. Most practitioners will talk about foods and supplements and pay lip service to the diet. I call it the missing link because most all Candida websites don't mention lifestyle at all. Until my book came along, every website I saw would not even talk about lifestyle when it came to yeast infection. Lifestyle accounts for almost half of your recovery, if not more, from candida. In fact, with some patients, it accounts for 75% or more. So lifestyle affects your immune system profoundly. It affects your endocrine or your hormone system. It also affects your nervous system. And this is something you don't want to hear. I'm sorry, but it's really important. It's got to come from me. It's important information for you to hear because you're going to have a very hard time beating candida if you regularly go out drinking and partying with your friends. If you go to bed at 3 a.m., spending an hour looking at your iPhone, it's not going to work. You're going to have a very hard time beating a yeast infection if you're living in a situation with bad relationships or you have a lot of stress hanging over your head. Maybe you have a stressful job. You've got a terrible boss. Maybe you work crazy hours. Maybe you're a single parent with multiple kids to take care of. Maybe you are a very lovely person who takes care of a sick or elderly relation. I can get that. You need what's called leisure time or relaxation time. Your nervous system needs downtime, even if it's 30 minutes a day. This is something most people just don't get enough of today. This isn't some woo-woo mental health kind of stuff. Leisure time activates the parasympathetic nervous system. This is what rebuilds your body. This is what helps to cleanse your body. Think about it. What do you do when you're ill with a fever or have some physical injury? You get proper rest. You get proper nourishment. You try and relax and engage in low stress activities so your body can finally heal. You don't go to the pub and then go home in a pizza and watch cat videos on YouTube till three o'clock. Don't worry about those fluffy cat videos. They can wait another day. You need to rest up. Okay? I want you to realize that the most stress you have, the more stress you have, the longer it's going to take for you to recover and the longer you'll need to stay on a candida cleanse. You've probably noticed this before. You may be one of those persons who's gone from cleanse to cleanse but just couldn't really get there. Were you really taking your lifestyle seriously at that point, or were you just swallowing a bunch of pills? Your gut tends to flare up at the worst possible times when you're going through some kind of stress. Have you noticed? Now you know why. It's because the autonomic nervous system that controls digestion and gut motility gets screwed up with stress so easily. Stress causes inflammation, can make your digestion shut down entirely until the stress is gone. That's why you need sleep and leisure time. Remember, the parasympathetic nervous system is most active when you're actually asleep. 40% of people in New Zealand, in my country, have a sleeping issue. But if you live in the United States today, you're looking more at 60% plus of people who need to take some pill or have an issue with sleep, either falling asleep or maintaining sleep. I can tell you now that you're making a huge mistake if you think you can beat candida by eating some vegetables going on some juice fast and swallowing a bunch of tablets. You're only fooling yourself. The biggest delusion is self-delusion. Lifestyle is a massive part of your recovery. The more chronic your health problem, 
the more lifestyle plays a prominent role in your recovery. Right, let's talk about some anti-candida supplements now while we're on the topic. I'm sure you're aware there's lots of supplements out there that claim to be beneficial for candida. Some patients I've seen take boxes of this stuff, sometimes up to 40 or 50 supplements a day. You can read all about this in Candida Crusher. I mentioned several cases. The truth is, you only need two or three supplements. You need quality supplements. You don't need, you need quality, not quantity. I've used supplements in my clinic for over 30 years, and I can tell you something. There's so many problems with much of what's out there on the market today. Too many supplements are filled with fake ingredients, junky ingredients. It's not my opinion, it's a fact. Back in 2015, the New York Attorney General Office ran a huge study where they did over 400 tests on supplements from four large stores in the States. They were GNC, Target, Walmart, and Walgreens. <clears throat> they sent bottles to a lab and did DNA testing to check if the ingredients matched what was on the label. And guess what? Everyone was shocked to find that four out of the five bottles didn't contain any of the herbs listed on the label. Not one. The pills were full of cheap fillers like rice powder. I mean, that's crazy. You can look it up. It was on CBS News in the States and a few other channels. And there's been several research studies exactly like this. I think one published in the BMC Med found that 68%, 68% of herbal supplements they tested didn't even contain the main ingredient listed on the bottle. This is why I get my lab work done on each shipment of raw materials I get for my Kanzita range of supplements. It's why I got sick of using other people's stuff. Too many patients kept getting aggravations like spaciness, brain fog, bloating, gas, all the symptoms, in fact, I was trying to eliminate. That's why in 2013, I started making my own Kanzita formulations to my exacting standards. This is in a sales pitch, and you don't have to buy my supplements if you don't want to. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm just here to teach you what to look for so you don't fall into these traps and get scammed by people who are just after profits and not good patient outcomes. Okay? So the supplements that will most benefit you if you've got candida are, number one, a broad spectrum, natural antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasitic, and I'll explain in a minute what all this jargon means. Number two, a high quality probiotic formula that actually contains enzymes in it as well, saves you buying two products. And number three, which is optional, but I really think it's a very important product. It's a great multivitamin, one with an antimicrobial back end to prevent years and years and years of buildup again slowly of these yeast and bacteria. So having nutrients in a multi is essential but I've not seen multivitamins that actually have a herbal base that inhibit microbes from, again, gaining foothold. So in this video, I'm only here to teach you how to pick out the antifungal portion, because otherwise this video will be hours long. I've got several in-depth videos on my YouTube channel on how to pick the best probiotic for candida, which you can do a search on after watching this particular video. Same goes for how to pick a multivitamin. Okay, so there are six criteria for what I call the most effective antifungal for candida. The first criteria is that the product contains only natural ingredients and that, the, that what is in the container and the label are synonymous, that the product actually contains exactly what it states. I'm not a fan of using pharmaceutical drugs for candida. I have in the past in medical centers, but I'm just not really a fan anymore due to the side effects and the ineffectiveness of these products. I found too many patients relapse after taking them. Chances are you've already experienced this yourself if you tried fluconazole or nystatin or another kind of antifungal pharmaceutical. Maybe it worked for a few weeks for you or a few months, but then the infection just came back. And that's because candida is very adaptive. Maybe you've heard of something called antibiotic resistant bacteria which are a huge problem in hospitals right now. Candida does the same thing. If you keep hitting it with one drug, it will eventually develop a resistance to that pharmaceutical. And then you're back to the doctor who puts you on another drug and another drug and another drug. And so the cycle continues on. Natural antifungals are different. 
yeast does not become resistant to them like pharmaceuticals. This has been confirmed many times with studies completed on things like grapefruit seed extract, caprylic acid, underselenic acid, clove, and many other natural ingredients. It just doesn't happen. It happens with pharmaceutical drugs because they're synthetic. They're only made up of one ingredient to target one symptom. They've got one ultra-refined chemical compound with a very narrow specific band of action. Once candida develops resistance to this specific action, the drug's done. Natural antifungals don't work that way. They don't just contain one thing. They've got many, many different natural chemical compounds in their makeup. They have what I call a shotgun effect. They hit candida with a broad range of different actions so the yeast gets obliterated. It becomes overwhelmed, gets taken down. This means once you've got a natural product that works, you can keep taking that product long term and not have to worry about rotating different formulations around to avoid resistance. Many candida websites talk about, in inverted commas, rotating the antifungals. This is actually false information. You don't need to do that. You just need to use the right formulation, okay? So let's move to the second criteria. Make sure your product has GMP certification label on it. It means good manufacturing practice. This is how you avoid products with fake ingredients, like the ones I mentioned before at those four big shops. The third criteria is look for a sustained release antifungal. Sustained release means when you swallow this product, your digestive system doesn't get access to everything immediately. But over a period of several hours, it slowly breaks down in your digestive system. That way it targets all parts of your GI tract. It cleanses all the yeast and bad bacteria right from your mouth through and keeps working all the way through the colon and back passage. This is how you can have a product with an extremely high concentration of antifungals like Kanzida Remove Formula and it will not cause a die-off re reactions or aggravations. I verified this with a thousand plus cases. Most antifungals release all their contents or payload like that, all at once in your stomach. All their actions happen in a short period of time and this can make you feel sick and bloated and overwhelmed, particularly if it's a very potent antifungal of one or two specific herbs. When you take a sustained release product, that antifungal action is spread over many hours. That way it can target more systems. You can handle a higher dose of antifungals without feeling physically sick. All right, number four, standardized ingredients. Check the label to see if the word standardized is next to any of the ingredients. For example, does it say 45% standardized in parenthesis next to an ingredient like grapefruit seed extract? Does it say four to one ratio next to an ingredient like clove, meaning it's a very powerful you know, specific formulation. The reason this is important to tell you is because it tells you that the company that made this product is testing it to make sure each time you take this product you're getting consistent therapeutic dose of the active ingredients. This doesn't vary in potency from batch to batch like non-standardized supplements which can vary widely from being therapeutically useless up to extremely potent. This is how you avoid the aggravations. This is a bit like how pharmaceuticals are made sometimes, okay? You get the same strong therapeutic dose every time you take it, but in the case of a natural product, you're not going to get those strong side effects as we've spoken about. Now, the fifth criteria is simple. Always choose a tablet versus a cellulose capsule. I'm not a fan of those cheap cellulose capsules full of different herbal powders. I don't find them nearly as effective as tablets. A tablet has to be compressed so it's always going to have more than in the capsule. In fact, tablets contain two to three times more than a capsule can hold. This dramatically cuts back on the amount you have to take. The sixth and final criteria is the broad spectrum activity. Meaning, does the supplement have a broad range of different ingredients in there? So it not only targets candida, but other kinds of yeast species as well. Any other bad bacteria that you may have in your gut at the time? Does it also target any parasites? So here are what I consider to be the 12 most essential ingredients to look for in your Candida supplement. These are broad spectrum ingredients with a wide band of action that are going to really cleanse your gut of a wide range of pathogens. They are grapefruit seed extract, berberine concentrate HCL, clove, aged garlic extract, caprylic acid, 
under selenic acid, betaine HCL, black walnut hull extract, powdarco, neem, biotin and oregano oil. These are also the ingredients I've chosen for my Kanzita Remove because this product meets all the six criteria I just mentioned. I'm not going to go in depth into why I consider these to be the best ingredients to take orally when you've got, when you've got a yeast infection, as I've already made a lengthy video specifically that you can watch on my channel. I've got a link to that video in the description for you. Okay, so that's how you choose an effective antifungal for your protocol. Go with the natural product. Make sure it's GMP certified product. You check that it's sustained release. You check that it uses standardized, highest quality ingredients. You make sure it's a tablet and not a capsule. This is very important for the antifungal, not so important for the probiotic enzyme. You make sure that you check the ingredients to see that you've got a nice quality formulation. If you want to learn more about Kanzita formulations, please go to kanzita.com. You can also do a search for Kanzita on YouTube and you'll find many videos about it from myself along with many testimonials from people who've used these amazing formulations. I'd like to thank you very much for paying attention to watching this video. I'd also like you to maybe watch it again once or twice in the following days to, to get the most important points from this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Thank you.